Hi guys, I'm Miko Sanchez, and, and uh, sorry it's a little late, but we gotta do it anyway. So yeah, welcome to Boshi Monster Bike Beat, we're on episode 509, and it's Sunday, after the time it's recording. So happy Sunday everybody, sorry it's a little bit late, but I gotta go to bed. As you know, I'm coming to you from my living room, and in my old house, with my mom. As she is taking my room, because she has to go to work. But that's okay, anything can happen in my life, so yeah. Uh, we do have uh, the, the season 2 finale of Logan Hizuboshi to have up today, yeah! I know. Also, well, the start of our new Moshi Monthly series, Moshi School, is today. <laughs> Don't miss it, we're gonna start with A to Z in history, followed by Mosh Theology, and we're gonna close it out with Math Masha. Math Mashix. So don't miss it, guys. And then on Monday, which is tomorrow, we start this. Well, we start the. We continue the season one playoffs in the Boshi Master League live with the Elite Eight. So don't miss it. It's gonna be a lot of fun for now. Back to the video. We got another glimpse to take a look at. So let's get started. Today, welcome to episode five of nine. And today is about Rocco Gray with a Taylor twist. And we're gonna get started today. I hope this should be pretty interesting for those who have seen episode 508. We took a look at the Robo Quacks, robot versions of DJ Quack, who you may not know about. Ugh, so yeah. Please go watch it now. The link is on the top right corner of the screen. Go check out the video right now. Otherwise, sit back, relax, and you're ready to your right. And here we go. So, who is Rocco? Rocco is a dark grayish, is dark gray bluish glump who was named by staff member Hamster Chew with long red lips, one crooked tooth, and and six gooey green freckles. He has a few scars and stitches on his face, which perhaps suggests he was involved in a fair amount of fights. Rocco features heavily in the twist saw, where he is very excited over the holiday. This is in conflict with hating everything, as said in his biography. So, take a look here. Davis Rocco, occupation, clock minion, typically of the daily ground, species, glove, relationships include everything and everyone. Marks them with hatred, and Dr. Strange's glove, who is demonstrated to be able to get away with things even under his watch. Oh boy. Check out the episode 160 I haven't seen yet, and right after this one. In the general biography, don't you just hate glumps? Rocco does. Then again, Rocco hates everything. That's why you, that's why you, that's why you often see the snaggle tooth brew doinking along before attacking with a Rocco Blocko back roll. Uh oh. So good. Character like PDS says here. Main. Grumpy, glumpy, Rocco hates everything and everyone, even the other glumps. Preferring to keep himself to himself, Dr. Strange Glove's nasty minion is often spotted wobbling around Marshall City on his own. But Marshallings, beware! Rocco may be alone, but he knows how to give a mean Rocco Blocko back roll. No fair. Lonesome glump, Rocco is very unfriendly and a total loner. He rarely speaks, but that's no loss because no Moshi w would want to speak to this gloomy glove anyway. Oh man. Ron and Rocco. Everything about revolving, revolting Rocco is negative and unhappy. His eyebrows are set in a constant frown and he never ever smiles. Maybe he just needs some new friends to cheer him up? Mm, I don't know. Data found, location type, location, top secret, John Claw Minion features angry, aggressive, solitary notes, scary snackle tooth, and aggressive glare. <sighs> Mojipedia. It's the same as the general biography, don't you just hate gloves? Rocco does, then again, Rocco hates everything, that's why you often see the Saga Tooth brood do a doinking along before attacking with a Rocco block of back roll in the Magnificent Boshi Circus. Don't you just hate gloves? So does Rocco, then again, Rocco hates everything, even when he's disguised as a clown. That's why you often see this Snaggle Tooth brood doinking along before attacking with a Rocco block of back roll. Especially when he's headlining at a circus. You have been warned! And in the official Club of Figures Guide, talk about a grumpy glump. There's no pleasing some glumps, particularly this one. This boy brood hangs out on his own or attacks others with a Rocco Block back roll because he just hates everything. A Rocco Block back roll. You know what I mean? Yeah. Go on to the fiction. Rocco debuted on the Daily Ground on April 8, 2011. Labeled as Glump 7. First Glump, Glump 2. None of the Glumps pictures there have changed appearance. So yeah, we have Glump 1, Glump 2, Glump 3, Glump 4, Glump 5, Glump 6, Glump 7, Glump 8, Glump 9, Glump 10, Glump 11, Glump 12, and Rocco is Glump 7. Now, now take a look. I'm going to change these names to the actual names of the Glumps. There they are. Blippi, Paj, Fabio, Masaccio, Bruiser, Ned, Rocco, Fish Lips, Swift, Pirate Bog, Blackjack, and Freak Face. So, Blippi is Glump 1, Paj is Glump 2, Fabio is Glump 3, Mustachio is Glump 4, Bruiser is Glump 5, Ned is Glump 6, Rocco is Glump 7, 
Fish Lips is Club 8, Squiff is Club 9, Fire Fog is Club 10, Blackjack is Club 11, and Free Face is Club 12. So yeah, so yeah, Squiff is going to be, the Squiff is only a few episodes away, so stay tuned for it. We'll get to him very shortly. His next appearance, though, his experience, too, was on the Daily Growl. This post being the results for the official names, all given by the Motion Monsters community. Rocky's, uh, no, Rocco's name was revealed along with the creator Hamster Crew, the Hamster Chew. In the book of Rocco taunts the player, though, through grim grimaces and smirking, all by lowering his face. Unlike other clubs, he does not stick his tongue out in such despite as the most ghastly of the group. Oh. Oh, no, you did not. No way. In Halloween 2012, the Club for Lanterns were released, and ergo, Rocco had a new item marked under his name. Rocco's item is uh, effulgent and dyed a murky blue, the eyes seemingly facing upwards along with the two eyebrows of different proportions. The mouth, the mouth jutted and curled with a, with a border of pink. Oh boy. And on the left side of the screen, there is the Club for Lantern of Rocco, so keep that in mind. St moving on in Chocolate Out Blues, Rocco, along with his group of Fabio, Fish Lips, and Ned, captures the protagonist. Rocco is demonstrated as the leader with the most prominent speech and a military beret slash lieutenant like attire. In the concluding scene of part one, he is the only one to speak such as such giving the super motion of her ring phase and a worried reaction just prior to everything blacking out. Ugh. Man, uh, mm, oh boy, this is no good. Uh, Fabio was episode 197, Fish Lips episode 126, and Ned episode 504. If you have seen any of these episodes yet, watch them now. Also, don't forget about the Super Moshi episode 4 and 10. Watch that as well. Part 2 commences with Rocco effectively narrating what, what happened to the protagonist, Super Moshi. Bolting them. That's right. I have to get rid of the U to Americanize it. There you go, my friends. He provides commands for the rest of his squad. This is Rocco's final appearance in the mission, with him disappearing through ascension back at the back to the top of the work site where the mission is set. And here he is on the right side of the screen, Rocco wearing a beret for military attire. So now you know, that's good. Moving on, in July 2015, with the release of the Magnificent Moshi Circus, Rocco was the only glup with a victory aside from Bloopy. Rocco curiously looks slightly happy, though. This is likely just the clown makeup. His mouth is textured, whereas the makeup itself is not. As it extends further, from the further out and curls up. Ugh. Bloopy, check him out. Episode 494. Watch it right now. I haven't seen yet. Moving on. Moving on. Marco's eyebrows, however, are raised and has two spouts of hair, likely a wig, tucked under a balloon like hat. His circus art is similar, but the two hair spouts are blue instead of purple. His bow tie is is a blood red, also instead of purple. With the white makeup on his face extends above his eyes, the eyes themselves are being pronounced more by a ring and eyelashes. A green band circles the hat, and freckles are detailed on the cheeks. So yeah, get the picture, guys. The two references are on the bottom of your screen, so look closely. You may never know. We got to the appearance. Rocco, in comparison to Velo Clumps, has a rather flat body shape in the sense that it is generally lesser in height. And, to top it off, he lacks hair, which generally gives more presence in this field. His face, however, is rather chiseled, with bulky eyebrows letting his murky yellow eyes impart. His body is enveloped in dark purple with a turquoise constellation of spots by the side of his mouth. Mm -hmm, that's good. And the personality and habits? Rocco has a generally naughty nature, but, interest, but, interestingly, but interestingly, always gets away with his misconduct. As such, he is demonstrated by disobeying Dr. Strange Love, an example of which being in the Twistmas in the Twistmas with Strange Love Moshi Monsters Twistmas CD, where he reads aloud Dr. Strange Love's letter to Santa, implying the two have a rather open relationship in which Rocco can misbehave without being punished. On the topic of Twistmas, Rocco is also shown to be very eager and excited to excited regarding the holiday, showing that even he can show happy emotion. <laughs> if you want to go check out Mr. Dr. Strange, he was on episode 106, goals, so watch it after this one. Follow, following from this, Rocco is inclined to violence and general mis miserableness. His mashup cards, for instance, have attacks to do with frowning and biting. All three of his biographies talk about his violent tendencies, loneliness due to being so feared and disliked, and unvarying angriness. 
and Araka also seems to enjoy being able to command others to do things. <sighs> Going from Chocodile Blues, so now you know, this, in conjunction with the naughtiness and solitariness, shows he has a level of independence above all things. <laughs> yeah, that's it, guys. But in the gallery, for in-game, we have we have, we have three pictures uh, for the three pictures of Rocco in double club. We have him as a global lantern, and you know, and again, same as four for with, with his military attire. So now you know. Finally, for the merchandise, we have two pictures of uh, two best of cards, one from Super Moshi and the other from Code Breakers. We have total of we have total of eleven figures, nine regular and two two for the magnificent Moshi circus. We have his Moshi wants a Canada card. We have his we also, we also have we also have a Madame Saboshi Circus Canada card as well, and we have a Circus Arts so that I, for reference. And finally, for the other, we have his Moshi Monsters Top Trump Scar. So that's it, guys. That's the end of Rocco, ladies and gentlemen. Final three for the schedule. I gotta say, Rocco definitely deserves the best spot. Even though he doesn't have hair, he's still good to go. And so thus, Rocco, cheer up. You're the best club ever. So that's all this game was. That rate club with a score of eight out of ten. Rocco, you are a great club. Keep up the good work. And I promise you, you you will soon rule Monstro City very soon, and then the entire Moshi world. So now you know. It's all about reserved for you guys. You can feel free to read or disagree with any last opinions in the comment section below. With that, guys, we're done. Thanks for watching another episode of Moshi Monster Bye V. I'll see you in the evening today, because it is now Sunday. Cheer up. We'll, we'll get there soon. So, so and, and since today is Sunday, we began our Moshi School series, starting starting with episode one. Episode one is today. Start and uh, starts with A to Z in history, followed by followed by Moshiology and finally Math Moshix. So don't miss it, guys. We're counting on you. Do not miss it. Tune in. Otherwise, guys, you have a great rest of the day. Thanks for watching. I'm Gus Sanchez. You be yourself. I will see you in the evening for another episode of Moshi Monsters Biography. All the for the Scare Force One because that is the next episode, my friends. Episode five hundred ten is about Scare Force One, so stay tuned, guys. It is the it is the blimp and uh, is the blimp of Clock, and it's gonna be amazing. Check out Clock first on episode four ninety six, then come back so we take a look at the Scare Force One. So it's gonna be a big one. There, the it's the blimp that'll, that'll take anyone out there across Monster City and the whole Moshi world. So do not miss it, guys. See you there. For now, thanks for watching. I'm guys sent you. Please remember to leave a like, share this video with your friends, leave a comment down below, and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Also, turn on notifications to not miss new videos. Subscribe to notifications to turn on to not miss new videos. For yes, we're all to 1,200 subscribers. Thank you for watching, and I hope you have a fantastic day. We're all the to 1,200, so subscribe right now. Otherwise, thanks for watching, and thank you, Rocco. You're the best glump ever. All right, we'll see you on episode 5 or 10 as we take a look at the Scare Force 1. Have a great rest of your day. I'm guys sent you. off. I'm tired. I'm stressed. I'm going to, I'm going to sleep right now. I'm going to go get to sleep, and I'll talk to you in the morning. Thanks for watching, guys. Like, share, subscribe. I'll see you in another video. Laters.